This is a subject that so few people understand and yet will trigger you being able to walk in the Shema, will get supernaturally allow you to love God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Not drumming it up, not a, a matter of works, of mitzvot. No, it's a supernatural rest in God you, you see, my guest, Michael Henson, had a three-day visitation from God. And during this visitation, God showed him his heart. And he thought he had a pretty good heart until he saw what God saw. And Michael, when you saw how wicked, and that's the best word I can describe it, how your motivations, which you thought were right, were wrong, what did you say to Jesus? Well, it was devastation to me. And, and he didn't show me a picture or a movie reel of my heart. He just came in his presence alone. The purity of who he is, the darkness in my heart, just it, it was there. It was in between what he was looking for from me and who, and who I had become. But you couldn't take it after a while. It was, it, he didn't show it to me all at once. I think I would have died. Huh. Um, I really do. There were times when I was so heavy and so, so it was so overwhelming, the experience, that he showed it to me in layers as it, as it went back. And at the end of all of that, when I finally repented, when I understood the truth of it, when it was over, I had picked up a love that there are no words that can describe. I had a sensation of God being in everything and in everyone like never before. And that's not left me to this day. And, and you shared last week that many that have physical illnesses, that have fear, that have uh, emotional problems, mental problems, uh, anything, cancer, uh, arthritis, any of these diseases, when they deal with the root cause, which is their heart, it's like the healing begins to flow. It's instantaneous, and, and the thing that is so wild about it, it is so easy. Everywhere we go, when we're ministering to people, at the end of it, they go, this was so easy. We get emails and reports back of months later where people go, I can't believe that the joy is this real. I never imagined it was like this. I didn't know there was this kind of contentment available. I had no idea. People going through trials and tribulations, calling and saying, I've never felt such peace before in my life. I, I, I am feel, not alone. Wait a second now. I can tell you, Michael, I feel supernatural peace just as you're speaking. Would you teach just a little on one of the many subjects here, but on forgiveness. I love the way you teach that. Well, forgiveness is easy. One of the problems with forgiveness is many people jump into the New Testament without bringing the teaching on forgiveness out of the Old Testament. God does not. Yeah, you know what? That's that marriage I've been talking about, the one new man, the Jew and the, and the Christian merging together. The, the Jew without the Christian. You're incomplete. I can say that. I'm Jewish, but the Christian without the Jew. You're incomplete. But when the two merge together, what do we learn from the Old Covenant? Is that God separates sins from people. He separates them and pulls them away from them, and He chooses to remember them no more. He doesn't forget them. He's not some old senile man. He chooses to remember them no more because they're no longer a part of them they are no longer in association with that person. They are absolutely 100% free of that sin. So people who've been washed in the blood of Jesus, everything of those sins that they've appropriated to the cross, they're gone. They're not part of the identity of that person anymore. When we try to forgive So that people, sin always exists. The question is whether it is connected to the individual or that's separated from them on the cross. Is that's that That's exactly it? it. And there's an appropriation process that many of us miss. We, we just think that, that we're to forgive sin, but that's contrary to the teaching in the Bible. God doesn't forgive sin, He forgives sinners. Everywhere it's in context where He says forgiving sin, He's really talking about people being redeemed. He's not talking about sin being redeemed because it never was. It was taken on the cross of Jesus Christ and He bore it. But the wages of sin is death. And He died on the cross taking the sin from us. So when we pray for people and lead them in the simple teaching that is in this book, it is how to separate sins from people. Remember we said before that unforgiveness is a poison you drink, hoping the other person will get sick. 
and that on that poison goes all the way through your body and then it will eventually show up in ailments medical science is just finding out now how powerful forgiving is for people getting healed give me an example that comes to mind of one i know there's thousands and thousands one specific person that followed this advice and got physically healed um met a woman uh, this is one of the first people i ever prayed for met a woman and went pray for her. She told me that her husband had left her and had run off with the secretary. Apparently he'd had other indiscretions before and she wanted prayer for her bad back. When I asked her about her husband and the details, you could tell that she was still hurting from this. And it had been a couple of years, but she was extremely wounded. Her back was so bad, it took people to help her sit down and she was in pain all the time, 24 hours a day. Medicine didn't even touch the pain anymore. And she was at one of the services. She had received prayer from many, many, many from different people for the same thing without, without any results. I led her into a prayer with a technique that's so simple in this book and that shows you how to separate the sin and do it all the time. She was able to separate the sin from her husband, appropriate it to the cross, truly forgive him and give him this forgiveness. And when she did, I noticed two things. I was crying because of what she was doing was sincere from her heart. And I noticed, you know, through tears, she looks 10 years younger. When I now, are you just eyes. saying that as a manner of speech? No, absolutely. She looked younger. And so I dried the tears from my eyes. She was 10 years younger. The countenance in her face had, had changed. Joy had flooded her heart and moved into her face. She jumped up out of that chair, jumping up and down. She has never been the same since. Any pains? Absolutely none, and not any since then. And not only that, she had been estranged from her kids because of the pain between her and her husband. God restored everything to her. Okay, when we come back, I want you to explain a few steps and then pray for the people. Will you do that? Absolutely. Okay, I know you're not gonna go away. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Michael Henson, and it's so simple, as Michael says, you need help to get confused. This whole subject of forgiveness, if you don't have your Hebraic understanding, you miss what Yeshua, the King of the Jews, is talking about in the New Covenant. You need the two. I, I'll tell you what, without the Hebrew Scriptures, you can't understand the New Covenant. And by the way, without the New Covenant, you can't understand the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures. Michael, would you teach a little bit about forgiveness? Forgiveness is so easy. Everything in this book is so easy. The things about God are just easy. They're not complicated at all. Forgiveness is one of the basic things in the fundamental part of the church. We as believers quite often think that all we have to do is just forgive the person. But there's a practical application that has to take place. We have to have an understanding that the sin does not rest with the person. We're not forgiving the sin. If we're trying to forgive the sin, then we'll go nowhere. The next day we'll have to do it again. The next day we'll have to do it again. Sure, let, let's take a woman that as a child was, uh, was abused. It's hard to forgive that sin. We Difficult. show how to do this. That, that's another thing, and we'll come back to that too as well. Abuse is... So many people get counseling for it. They go years and years. They come to one of our meetings and they're instantly free. And it isn't just because they're able to forgive. Some of the abusers are forgiven, but they still live with the guilt and the shame that they were somehow responsible for that abuse. And they don't know how to get free of it. They've been believing a lie for the, since the day it happened to them. So it's kind of stuck to them. It's they... stuck to them. Part. It's ruined every part of their life. It has destroyed part of who they are. And it is so easy to get free. It is easy for this for them to be free of this okay. one thing. Someone that has unforgiveness towards someone else, and that's all the people that are watching right now. I want to pray a prayer. I know you want to. I know you want to mean it. And I know you want to see results. 
I believe that when people pray, as you call it, this simple prayer, they're actually, many of them are going to be physically healed and relationships are going to be restored. Life is going to be changed. If this is easy prayer to pray, what I want to do is do a really, really quick synopsis that God does not forgive sin. He forgives the sinner. So when we say this prayer, what the person did to you is wrong. And you're not forgiving what they did. You're going to release the person from this forgiveness. Also, they don't deserve this forgiveness. But you didn't deserve it either. They didn't earn it back from you. They may not have even accomplished that, that goal. It's a debt that you have in your heart. And if you hold on to that debt, you're no different than the tax collectors that required them to pay a debt before they let them pass the wall into the city. This is a debt that you're going to cancel and open your heart back up. And when you cancel this debt, some people are thinking, well, I'm just going to get hurt again. You're already walking in the fear and the pain of it right now. This is the easiest of all things. We're going to separate the sin from the person, literally take it from them and put it on the cross of Jesus Christ. So just repeat this prayer. You know who you are and you already have in your heart who it is that you hold unforgiveness to. So just say this, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus the Messiah, what this person did to me was sin. What this person did to me was sin. Take this sin from them. Take this sin from them. And put it on the cross of Jesus Christ. And put it on the cross of Jesus the Messiah. And separate it from them. And separate it from them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. And on the day of judgment, and on the day of judgment, when I stand before your throne, when I stand before your throne, I'll hold no accusation against them. I will hold no accusation against them. Father, they will be free. Father, they will be free. Even now, I release them. Even now, I release them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And you need to finish with this. Father, Father, bless them. Bless them. In every way possible. In every way possible. And prosper them. And prosper them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's, uh, maybe you can help me. There is such a sweet presence of God that's just entered this set. What is this here for? This is a part where our spirits are still before the Lord. When we can see the things that are inside of us that God wants to touch and minister to. This is when He comes in and starts ministering, touching things in our heart. So He's saying this 